Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional solutions to your health, vitality, and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you heard something, read something, someone told you something about formulations or ingredients or products and you want clarification, we're here for you at 844 844- Two three six sixty ten. We'll get your calls in the, our next segment. We've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Richard Gordon, the author of a couple really interesting books about healing, about the quantum nature of healing. Don't be put off by the word quantum. Quantum just means magic. It means things turning on and off spontaneously. It means things happening with no cause. It blows cause and effect out of the water. There's no cause and effect at the quantum level. That, that means power for us. That means we can turn things around instantaneously using quantum ideas. We live in a mechanical world. We, we live in a, a mechanical society even though we leverage quantum science all the time with our computers and our smartphones and our televisions. And uh, There's so many different ways that we uh, apply quantum truths to our day-to-day -day lives, but still we live in a mechanical society. We use mechanical uh, mechanical ideas to heal the body, devices and surgeries and, and chemistry and drugs and all the ways that we traditionally heal ourselves are based on Newtonian or classical or mechanical physics. But we live in a quantum world and we have yet to leverage the, quant the power of quantum ideas when it comes to health and when it comes to wellness. At the quantum level, things just turn on and off. We can heal ourselves instantaneously at the quantum level. And that's what we're going to be talking about uh, with uh, Richard Gordon at the bottom of the hour. His book's The Secret Nature of Matter and Quantum Touch. We'll take your calls in our second segment today at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or uh, questions about the longevity products or, of course, comments or success stories you'd like to share, you can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866 866- 735-2470 for more information and you can check out all our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com got free shipping for you for the month of december if you're dealing with accelerated aging of your skin or, or age spots on your skin or acne blemishes you want our truth retinol five percent gel if you're looking for anti-aging products and high dose vitamin c products with no preservatives or fragrances or fillers or waxes you want our truth transdermal c serum and our truth transdermal c balm and if you're interested in intense moisturization and skin softening and healing, you want our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. All our products are up at truthtreatments.com. And we also have new products coming out here, uh, coming out in uh, hopefully in the next mm, four to eight weeks or so. Okay, we're talking fluoride, the toxic, very toxic element that's added to our water supply. It's an industrial waste. It's supposedly, uh, it's added to, for its supposed anti-cavity benefits. 
Fluorite, as we said, is the most electronegative element of the periodic table, which basically means it has a powerful pulling power. It's, a, it's like a super high-powered magnet. Remember those, remember those monster magnets they used to have when you were a kid that were like intense magnets? That's what fluoride is. It's a super intense magnet. It's highly magnetic. It attaches itself to other minerals very, very effectively, whether those minerals are calcium or magnesium or aluminum or sodium or tin. Stannous fluoride is tin fluoride that's found in Crest and Colgate toothpastes. This magnetic property of fluoride is what's so prized by dentists in the dental community because it allows fluoride to stick to enamel and then supposedly prevent acid from breaking it down. And this is how... Uh, this is the mechanism behind fluoride's dental benefits that governments and, and dental authorities love about this very toxic stuff. Love so much that they think that they, they, it should be in toothpaste and gels and mouth rinses and the water supply. And that it's so important for, our, for, us, and for, our, for us and our, for our children to use on a regular basis. Best way to avoid fluoride is just don't drink tap water. We're going to talk about water here in the coming days. Tap water. Tap water can be very filthy stuff. Article came out uh, a couple couple of years ago in, from Scientific American, uh, talking about all the nasty stuff that's in tap water. We're on, we're under the illusion that tap water is is clean, and it is relatively clean compared to puddle water, I suppose. But there's still all kinds of contaminants that you'll find in tap water. And the best your best choice is not to avoid fluoride. Anyways, just don't drink the tap water. Now we don't always have a choice, and there's of course water tap water is found in all processed foods in all foods, as we said. So make sure you're using lots of vitamin C. Vitamin C is very anti-fluoride. It's one of the most, it may be the most powerful of the anti-fluoride vitamins. Vitamin E is anti-fluoride. NAC is anti-fluoride. NAC, sulfur, MSM is anti-fluoride. Uh, magnesium is wonderfully anti-fluoride. But probably nothing is more anti-fluoride than vitamin C. Make sure you're using lots of vitamin C, especially if you're drinking lots of tap water. You can also get a water distiller, or reverse osmosis machine, which we'll be talking about here in the next few days. There's also some very interesting literature that suggests that this uh, a plant called the holy basil plant can have anti-fluoride benefits. According to researchers at Rajasthan University in India, soaking 75 milligrams, that's a couple of pinches of holy basil leaves, in um, half a cup of water or so, that had seven parts per million of fluoride. Uh, they, soaked the, they soaked the water in this holy basil plant for eight hours. The fluoride concentration went down to 1.1 part per million. So went down by almost 85% just by adding a couple pinches of holy basil water. And holy basil, uh, the holy basil plant, uh, which is also known as the Tulsi plant, not only removes fluoride, it also has anti-fluoride be uh, anti benefits. It can protect you from liver toxicity and kidney toxicity that's associated with fluoride. And as a bonus, the Tulsi, Tulsi plant, T-U-L-S-I, or, or, or also known as the holy basil plant, contains anti-inflammatory nutrients, antioxidant nutrients, it's pain relieving, it's antiseptic, it's an aphrodisiac, it's antibacterial, it's antifungal. It's used in India to treat fevers and coughs and colds, lung disease, arthritis. It's even used as an insect repellent. That's the Tulsi plant, holy basil plant. So the government tells us that fluoride is good for us because it prevents cavities. That's their pitch. That's, uh, as Edward Bernays, our the famous Edward Bernays put it, that's how they engineered consent. Edward Bernays came up with the term engineering consent, which means doing something and tricking the public into thinking it's good for us, basically. And so uh, the way they engineered consent to allow fluoride to be put in the water and people to believe that it was somehow good for us, remember they had to get rid of this fluoride. Fluoride's being produced by the hundreds of thousands of tons in, uh, when they, in the aluminum manufacturing business. So, uh, so the way they convinced us, they engineered consent, as they told us it was good for us. It was somehow good for our teeth. But whether or not toxic fluoride is actually anti-cavity is not, com it's not something everybody agrees upon. According to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC Center for Disease Control and Prevention, quote, the prevalence of dental caries, that's the technical term for cavities, the, dental, the prevalence of dental caries in a population is not inversely related to the concentration of fluoride in enamel and a higher concentration of enamel fluoride is not necessarily more efficacious in preventing dental caries. That's the CDC, that's the government talking there. But we don't really know yet how effective fluoride is for, uh, for uh, preventing cavities. We do know that this stuff is deadly, deadly toxic.
Okay, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll be back right after. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben, and we're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the U.K. for setting that up. You can search, you can search by topic or uh, by program or by date at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can also purchase Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour. Richard Gordon is going to be talking about his new book, The Secret Nature of Matter, which follows his, uh, his first book, Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal, uh, Alternative Medicine Magazine called that one a significant breakthrough in hands-on healing. Richard Gordon is a very fascinating, fascinating guy. I talked to him on the phone a couple of days ago, um, and he's come up with some really interesting ideas when it comes to healing the body using something he calls spontaneous postural alignment, SPA. We'll talk about that at the bottom of the hour. I'll take your phone calls this segment, 844 236 Sixty ten eight four four two three six sixty ten. Let's go to Texas, and oh, we'll continue talking fluoride on our next episode, on our next bright side episode. We'll talk about what you can do about fluoride, some of the some more of the toxicity associated with fluoride, and then um, we'll, we'll talk about water filters and water filtration and tap water in the coming coming uh, days on the bright side. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten. Good morning to John in Texas. How you doing, buddy? I'm fine. Thanks, Ben. Oh, John, okay. you, underwear. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're all over the darn place. You are all I over the place. I am. I'm somewhere different every day. What's going okay, on, John? I have a foundation. I have two, I have two, not two questions, a foundational statement and a question. Yes, if sir. If I understand everything right, we eat food, uh, we eat carbohydrates, they go into the intestines, uh, they come through into the blood system, they come into the liver where they're converted to glucose at which time they go into the bloodstream, activates the pancreas, puts out insulin, opens up the receptors on the cells, and the glucose goes in. Okay, kind that of, that's close, close enough, close enough, yes. Close enough. Uh, okay, yeah. well, I was listening to some bodybuilders yesterday on YouTube who were talking about whey protein, and they were comparing it with bone broth protein and other types. Okay. And one guy said that in similar manner that when you eat a protein, this whey protein, that it spikes your insulin which then goes to your cells, opens up receptors, and allows the protein to come in. So yeah. it makes in the protein faster. Is That's there right. Insulin. To that? Absolutely. Insulin. You know, insulin is a feeding hormone, not just for sugar. It's, it's a cell feeding hormone. It opens up the gates in the cell. So that when exactly. you know, when we're ultimately when we're talking about nutrition, we're not talking about nutrition getting into the tissue, into the stuff. We're talking about it getting into the cells. Remember, the body's made up cells and stuff, right? Like raisin bread. So the cells, are the, the cells are the living organisms, and it's the stuff that the cells produce that, that make the tissue, the collagen, the elastin, the various, the various structural fibers and, and liquid secretions. They all come out of the cells. So when we talk about feeding the body, we're really talking about feeding the cells. Insulin is like a, acts like a garage door opener, and it opens up the cells so, so sugar can get in, and that's, when we're, you know, that's what we always hear about. But it also opens up the door so minerals can get into a cell. It all, also opens up the garage door so protein or amino acids can get into the cell. In other words, if you want to feed the cell, you've got to have insulin around. And this is why bodybuilders will always use a little bit of, uh, of uh, sugar with their protein. Because the sugar will spike the insulin and it will allow the amino acids to get into the cells more effectively, just like it allows the sugar to get into the cells more effectively. So insulin is a feeding substance, a cell feeding hormone that opens up the gates like a garage door opener on a cell. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So you always want a little bit of sugary, that grape juice or fruit juice with your whey protein. If you're using it after your, you know, you want to really maximize the amount of protein that, that the cells get. You always want a little bit of insulin hanging around. Okay. And that's what bodybuilders would do. Bodybuilders actually will use insulin to build bodies because insulin, insulin will actually uh, support cell feeding so effectively that it, it can be a bodybuilding tool. And insulin and uh, bodybuilders will, will sometimes actually, in, even if they're not diabetics, will actually use insulin. I remember when I was working out feverishly as a teenager, 
there was this guy who was uh, who would just go around to all the gyms and just sell insulin to bodybuilders. That was before anybody knew about uh, the toxicity associated with insulin. And make no mistake about it, insulin is associated with accelerated aging. I don't want to say toxicity, but accelerated aging. So you got to be really careful with insulin. But if you're a bodybuilder, you know, and you really want muscle, uh, insulin can be helpful there. And then, of course, insulin also is helpful, as, as you point out, for helping feed the cells amino acids and minerals and vitamins in addition to sugar. Wow. Okie doke. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate All right, take it. care, buddy. Drive safe. Uh-huh. Thanks. Thank Have a you. good weekend. All right, let's go to another John in Kansas. Good morning, John in Kansas. How you doing? Good morning. John? Uh, hey. Hey, uh, my wife and I have been uh, doing quantum chess for six years. We appreciate you having Richard Gordon on today. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You've been doing quantum touch? Yeah, for six what you, years. What do you think? Uh, most amazing energy healing system on the planet. That is super cool. I'm glad you brought that up. What did you use it for? Um, we do energy healing for clients, and we also, as part of our church, we do uh, healing services at church, and so we have people come to us to have chronic conditions that need help with. We also try to educate them on nutrition. But So you're a therapist? Yeah. You're a therapist? What kind of therapy do you do? We, we combine uh, uh, quantum touch with... Uh, uh, polarity therapy and uh, essential oils and uh, longevity nutrition to get very nice very nice now, now you're are you regular listener to the program or are you listening because of richard oh regular okay nice that's awesome well how can i help you only have about a minute or two how can i help you uh pitting edema in my calves okay uh, all right pitting edema is a sign that you're holding on to water the pitting part just means that when you press it develops right. the, 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 when you put your finger in there. For the listeners, when you put your finger into the swelling area, you get a little pit. It doesn't go back up again. They call it pitting edema. The pitting part right. isn't the problem. It's the edema. Edema means, right. you're not circu- it means you're not circulating. Your blood's not circulating correctly, and the, the liquid is starting to pool out of the blood, starting to drop out of the blood and pool down to the lower parts of your body. You've got a couple things. First of all, it's a circulatory problem, so you may have some cardiovascular health issues, some heart health issues. I don't know if that's the case or not, but you might want to think about that. You may also have sticky blood, thick blood. If you have thick blood, uh, that usually means that something is getting into the bloodstream through the digestive system, so you've got to work on foods and work on the digestive, the whole digestive thing we talk about all the time. Fast for a couple of days, then do a food diary and eliminate problem foods. I just, probably, I just came off a three-day fast. Did you notice any change in the edema? Um, not a lot. And, well, did you notice any, though? Taken. Not really. It was using okay. the I-26 and the green tea. Okay, good. Well, that all help. That'll all help you. Stay with the I-26. That stuff's great. And also the, uh, uh, also the nightly essence, the probiotics and fermented foods. Most importantly, though, is you've got to move your lymphatic system, move your body. Get on a rebounder and hang upside down. Those are two most important, two most effective ways to reduce pitting uh, edema in the bottom of the legs. Hanging upside down on an inversion device. You know what I'm talking about? Those things where you put yeah, boots on you. You hang upside down and then get on a get on a rebounder, a mini trampoline, and jump up and down for two or three minutes in the morning, two or three minutes at night. Is it worse in the morning, by the way? Uh, actually, early morning and late evening, both. Yeah, yeah. You got to get on a rebounder both times, early morning and late evening. First thing in the morning and then late evening. You may have some kidney issues as well, but it's a circulatory problem is what you're looking at. John, I got to go. I got a uh, Thanks, commercial break. And then we got Richard. Thanks for your kind words. Appreciate it. Have a, uh, have a good day. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got Richard Gordon and Quantum Touch and The Secret Nature of Matter. Katie Armour is back. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central and 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can purchase them off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can also purchase all our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Got free shipping for you for the month of December. I am very excited to have our next guest on. Richard Gordon is the author of Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal, and a new book, The Secret Nature of Matter. Uh, both of which are very interesting books. We're going to talk about what exactly the secret nature of matter is and how quantum touch works. 
The Power to Heal with Richard Gordon. So please welcome to the Bright Side, Richard Gordon. Hey, Rich. Hey, Ben. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Good to talk to you again. So I am very excited to tell everyone what the secret nature of matter is. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about quantum touch, uh, how you develop the concept, and what people, how people can use it to deal with uh, mundane Newtonian kinds of bodily breakdowns like autoimmune disease and of cancer course. and acne, and, et cetera. And, yeah. and maybe tell, nice. tell the listeners a little bit about how... Uh, about who you are and how you got involved in this whole concept. Of yeah, healing. I've been in the fields of energy healing for over 40 years. I've written four best-selling books that are in 17 languages. We have certified practitioners in over 50 countries. Uh, we have hundreds of instructors teaching this work. And over the last about 45 years, I've had a series of breakthroughs. Now, most people are excited about quantum touch because it gives them a simple technique that they can use uh, to just bring down pain, inflammation, and to accelerate the healing process. And that's what most people are concerned about. And I took it a little further and discovered that I could affect people without even touching them, and that I've taught thousands of people to do it. And a quick way to determine that that's actually true is by spontaneously aligning their posture without touch. So if you measured how high the hips were or the back of the head, the occipital ridge, and you meditate for 10 seconds and you see that, oh, my God, we've aligned their hips, that was kind of a breakthrough that about eight or nine years ago that led to uh, my third book, this, uh, Quantum Touch 2.0. And then I discovered... Another breakthrough, just two years ago on Thanksgiving, my friend told me that if you uh, make a movie of yourself doing a healing session, people watching the movie could experience healing. And I thought, that's crazy. And I told him, I I said, I really find that hard to believe. He said, test it. So how am I going to test it in a way that I can even understand what's happening there? And what I did was I... I meditated as if I was going to help align someone's posture, and I made a selfie movie of it. And when I showed the movie to people, it actually worked. And that blew me away. So I ran 57 experiments to understand the ins and outs of this, the lawfulness of when it worked, when it didn't work. And that led me to a whole series of new discoveries. So I compiled them all and all the implications of what this really means into my newest book, my fourth book, The Secret Nature of Matter. Mm. Okay, now a couple, if, uh, a couple of questions real quick. So we hear the word quantum all the time. There, there's all yeah. kinds of quantum healing and you know, quantum medicine, and it, it's yeah. kind of in the jargon. It's sort of a meme these days, quantum. But how are you using the term quantum when you refer to quantum touch? What's the difference between regular touch and quantum touch, for example? Well, we're accessing what's called the life force energy, which is known as chi, ki, prana, and other names for that animating current of life. And we see radical acceleration of the healing process. All bodies self-heal. We can help stimulate that process. And, and this was just a conjecture, but it seemed to me that we're probably affecting matter on a quantum or subatomic level in order to accelerate that healing process. Hmm. And it's one of what I call three pathways for extraordinary self-healing. The first pathway of extraordinary self-healing is the common placebo effect. The subtext of the placebo effect is the body has this extraordinary mechanism to heal itself quickly, radically, unconventionally. So the placebo effect is just the idea that your brain can make you, you can heal if you believe, if you believe you can heal, you can heal, basically. Is that what you're saying? It's it's usually triggered by deception and dishonesty. And they tell you, oh, this pill is going to make you well, and then you take it. But there's also the nocebo, and if Mm -hmm. the doctor says you only have three weeks to live, you're likely to believe it and and fulfill that as well. So you can... Like a negative placebo. Yeah. So... One mechanism of radical self-healing mechanism is 
belief. Mm-hmm. But there's a second and third pathway. The second pathway is with the application of the life force energy, the chi, the ki, the prana. And that's what quantum touch does. By using simple breathing and body awareness exercises, no magic symbols, no attunements, no beliefs we're asking people to accept. We're not asking the subject who receives the session to believe anything. We ultimately believe that all healing is a form of self-healing. The cells get well on their own, and we're providing the energy environment for them to do what they want to do, to get well quickly. And, and sim- simply by br- using, accessing or leveraging breathing and body awareness. Yes. So what we're doing is we're moving awareness to our body. For instance, if someone were to hold up a finger and concentrate on that finger and bre- imagine you're breathing through that finger and just feeling as much sensation of the, mm. the tendons and ligaments and skin mm. and fingernail and even imagine stroking it with a feather – most people will feel that finger vibrating or tingling. Mm. And that's what we do. That's what we do with the whole body. Just by placing it's, attention. It's, Just yeah, by placing awareness on it. It's attention. And we're moving that awareness with great intention throughout the whole body and learning how to link it with the breathing and mm. how to, to create patterns of movement of that awareness through the body. And then we focus that awareness into our hands and use a very complicated method called the where does it hurt technique, where you simply sandwich the parts that are in pain with the person you're working on, and it tends to bring down the pain. And incidentally... What do you mean by that? What do you mean by sandwich? I didn't quite understand that. Well, if you have your hands on both sides of the pain, you're sandwiching Uh, it. I see what you're saying. So So you put one hand on each side, one hand on the left side of the pain, one hand on the... Create a sandwich. Okay. And just by doing that, you're going to energize that area and and facilitate healing? Yeah. The body will entrain to your vibration. And Mm. it's called resonance and entrainment. And your body does that. And we recently completed a clinical study that's uh, published in a peer-reviewed journal with 41 people with high levels of pain. And the average was a 67.4% reduction in pain in the entire group. Richard, what journal? Uh, Energy Psychology Journal. Okay. We got to take a break, okay? Hang on. We'll finish up when we come back from our break, okay? I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Richard Gordon. His book's The Secret Nature of Matter and Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Don't go away. Okay. We are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Richard Gordon about his books, The Secret Nature of Matter and Quantum Touch. Richard's website is www.quantumtouch.com, quantumtouch.com. Richard, you there, my man? Absolutely. Okay, so you, you were talking about three, three different mechanisms for healing, I think we could say. The placebo effect, uh, that's based on belief. This life force idea, which you leverage through breathing and body awareness. But by the way, uh, you said breathing and body awareness can help you access healing. Does, can I uh, assume or does that somehow imply that there's some, something going on with poor breathing techniques and lack of body awareness that leads, leads to disease? Does it follow yeah, that way? I, I hadn't really thought of it that way, but I'm sure that if you were doing the opposite of what works, it's not going to yeah. help. Yeah, so maybe the fact that we're so mental and so we're so in our heads and so out of our bodies, does that have... Uh, is that connected to, uh, or is there a relationship there to how it, it, uh, it sick we are? Contrib- it could certainly contribute. There's no question about that. And so you're putting, uh, uh, you're helping people uh, redirect their awareness down to the, their bodies and away from their mind by using breathing techniques and body awareness, correct? Yeah, and one of the really extraordinary things is you can have a great grandma working on an Olympic athlete who's got a sprained ankle or some kind of injury. And she can actually help them because she can raise her vibration high enough that it assists mm. his body to self-heal. So, so we see students in the first day of a quantum touch workshop. And this, generally the pain in the room goes down anywhere from 30 to 60% just I right away. I love that. Just by br- break on the first day. Just, by bre- just through breathing and body awareness. Yeah, it takes a, about an hour, hour and a half for people to learn the skill. 
And I would, when I was on the road, I felt like the guy selling the cheap suits. I'd say, I guarantee it. And I would <laughs> guarantee that people would be able to move the energy through their bodies sufficiently that they could just touch people and move bones back into alignment in a visible way before lunch break on the first day. Mm, that's amazing. So you're, you're talking about energy moving through the body. So in other words, when I think of that, I think of stagnation as being the enemy. That's how I've always said that stagnation is the enemy. Does that fit into what you're talking about? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we're, we're raising the vibration. You see, we believe that all healing is self-healing. The cells heal themselves. I do not know how I heal a paper cut on my finger. Right. I do not know how to heal anybody else's cells. But what we do is we provide that energy field that the body uses to stimulate its own self-healing process. Yeah. And that's the second pathway of what we'll call the extraordinary self-healing mechanism that the body has to do what it needs to do. So belief, breathing, and body awareness. And then what's the third? The third is an emotional process where when people can release the core emotion and move it all the way through uh, remorse and self-forgiveness, that it creates this extraordinary, fast, and often permanent healing. It's the most powerful of the three. I created another workshop that I call Self-Created Health that teaches people how to find, release, process, and move all the way through the self forgiveness, which turns into an extraordinary, overwhelming sense of self-love you can't even contain that mm. becomes love of, of God, source, oneness, grateful that you even had the condition because it showed how you would stop loving. And wow. the corollary is that the body has the ability to be sick, not as a dysfunction, but a communication from their own higher consciousness on how they stop loving. And that's the most impressive one because the energy work of quantum touch is often just analgesic. It'll take the pain away, it accelerates healing, but it doesn't necessarily get to the root, and the emotional process work will get to the root and cause, and usually it's, it's a more permanent type of healing mm. than just taking the pain away. W would you say that all dis-ease, out of ease, has this kind of emotional component, this lack of self-love or lack of self-forgiveness at its core? I, I think it's probably true 100% or close to that. It's just that people haven't learned how to discern that information of what's really there. Like what exactly a lack of self-forgiveness feels like? Well, we don't even know what the issue is. So I discovered a really simple interrogative technique where I ask people a series of basic questions like when did it begin and what emotions mm. do you feel and describe the symptoms. And by taking 30 to 40 responses from a person and then feeding them back, okay, 10 years ago when the condition began, did you have some of these issues going on? Did you feel like you were being stabbed in the back? Well, yeah, and that was the mm. symptomatic condition, but that was also the emotional condition. What do you do with those feelings? They're the ones I never want to feel. Maybe you're feeling them in your body instead of feeling wow. them as emotion. Wow. Oh, and all 40 fit like a glove, and now they own it. Then when they're ready, they do the release work, which is absolutely necessary, and then they go to the remorse, which is, wow, I really hurt myself. Do you, do you think I hurt that, other people, too. Do you think that's like the emotional correlate to the body awareness you're talking about in, in, in this pathway number two? This is an emotional awareness that's sort of an analog to that? You know, it, it, I hadn't thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. It is. You see, we don't let ourselves feel our bodies fully. Mm -hmm. We're in our heads, like you said. And then we certainly don't let ourselves feel, feel our, our emotions. emotions. Right, right. The, the biggest blockage that I believe humans have is our unwillingness to feel the intensity of our own emotion. Yeah. Because our pain goes deeper than we want to know, but our love actually goes deeper than we can know. Mm. It goes all the way forever. Love it. it goes to the to the it's end. It's infinite. Yeah. It's infinite. It's infinite. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't yeah. have a lot, it doesn't have an end it to it. Yeah, it has no end. So it have, how about this? Do you think that uh this idea of feeling our emotions sometimes gets confused with, with having an emotion. Like, in other words, people get, say, oh, I felt my emotion, I got really angry, but that's kind of a resistance to feeling your emotion. Well, I think, I think the anger is certainly there, and it's certainly real, and the 
resistance to feeling the anger has many reasons because people feel they get in trouble for it or yeah. they'll get punished for it or they feel like they'll, they'll get beaten up for expressing right. it or it's just not okay. So it turns into guilt or shame or yeah. other suppressions of emotion. And it turns out that the cancer patients who survive the best are the ones who are most willing to be angry at the condition, angry at their doctor, angry at their life, angry at their spouse, whatever. In fact, some physicians looked at cancer cells, and the ones that were the most dangerous, they said, look the angriest. Yeah. And yeah cancer stri- always strikes me as being a very angry disease in the sense that the, yeah. and the anger being turned on us, turned on, on the, the, the sufferer or the patient itself. Yeah. It's, and the anger and the patients are often the nicest people in the world. Yeah. They're called yeah. Prince of a Fellow, too good to be true. Yeah. And that's are clinical terms they use to describe the cancer patients. What's, what's eating you? Oh, nothing, just the cancer. Yeah. It's because the, can- the anger is not being expressed, it's being turned inwards instead that's of going out. Right. So, yeah. And yeah. So, so you're helping people expressing it. So you're helping people access these things or leverage these things somehow, somehow get into these things so they, they can be diffused. Yeah, that's the self-created health workshop. And most people are, it it takes some courage to be willing to go where you didn't want to go because these are the emotions you didn't want to feel. So those are the three pathways. Okay, so now we're, we're, you know, this has been a very interesting discussion. We're almost out of time. I want to ask you a couple things real quickly, if you could just uh, just answer real quickly. What what is the secret nature of matter? Can you say it in a sentence sentence or two? The secret nature of matter is that all matter... Glass, plastic, rubber, paper, pebbles can hold energy and intention. And Mm. I did this through 57 experiments. And if you just touch a person with the energy and tension that's been placed into this physical matter, you can untwist their posture in a way that's considered physiologically impossible. And then we discovered that you can entangle objects with consciousness and you can have thousands of objects with Thousands of people meditating on these objects. They're all joined together. We've now created what I call a group talisman. It's a quantum touch pendant that's holding the energy and intention of thousands of people simultaneously. And it's doing crazy stuff like straighten out a cat's bent tail. A cat was bent, you know, born with a bent tail, and somebody's running this pendant over the cat's tail. We're seeing wonderful stuff happening. And so there's... This could be a four-hour discussion. It's I know just we're just out of time, Richard. We're just out of time. Somebody who's sick out there, how do they how do they access your uh, information or, or workshop? What do they need to do? Just go to quantumtouch.com. Access practitioners, instructors, workshops, whatever you're looking for. Great, we've got work. We got lots of stuff. Great, thank you so much, Richard. Appreciate it. Hopefully, we get to, hopefully we'll get to talk again soon. Take care. Have a great day. Look forward to it. Thank you, Ben. Take care, buddy. All right, that's Richard Gordon. His book's Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal, The Secret Nature Matters. is the second book, and you can find more information uh, on his website, quantumtouch.com, quantumtouch.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.